Hey y'all, we got another James Brown lesson here. So we're gonna do Papa Don't Take No Mess. We're starting out with this G7-9 chord. 10, 9, 10, 10, 10. We're going. And then we're sliding it down. And we're doing an upstroke on this part of a G chord. This is four, three, and three. Part of a big G kind of, you know. So. So then we have a D7-9. Down, up, up. So we got. So that's your main rhythm for that tune. So we got. Now that part basically does that the whole time. There's one other thing that'll happen. We'll go G, F, E flat, D, back to the riff. Okay, now the other part has a wah wah on it. So it's gonna go, it's gonna wait till the one, and then it comes in. So it's like three, four, one. So it's three, three, five, five. And it's like B flat to G. Five, three, five, three, three, five. So three, four, one. Five, three, five, three, three, five, and then O oh, three, O oh, three, five. And you know how the wah wah works is you, you go down when you want it to be more high pitched and you pull back when you want it to be low pitched. So, so when I'm doing that, I'm like popping it down to make it kind of shoot out that treble a bit. So wherever you want it to like pop the most is where you drop it all the way down. And when you want to bring it back and get more bass, so you pull it off of there. So you got some kind of uh, back and forth going on. Three, four, one. And of course, if you don't want it going too crazy, you don't move it too much. You keep it kind of, kind of near the center, or you know wherever you like it sounding. But you don't always have to go too wildly crazy. Three, four, one. Let's get that little loop going. So let's talk about another riff that James Brown had in his show. This was kind of like the head riff of the whole show. This is where he would get to the end of a song and he would point to his head and this would mean like the head riff and he would give you a downbeat and that's where this would start. Wouldn't have a wah wah on really, so anyways. So it starts on this G note. And some people said it was really like a da 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 bomb, but that was kind of like um, like the snare, the drummer's snare could hit that lead in thing, but the rest of the band seemed to mostly hit on the ba da da bump bump, so like starting on a downbeat as opposed to like a just before a downbeat ba da 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 bump 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 bump, you know. So for me, I felt like I know I was supposed to try to get that that extra note, but I feel like it was more of a snare thing. So to me, I always just played. And that seemed to land in with the rest of the band tighter than trying to add that extra note. So anyway, we got. So 10, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 10. And then a G7 raise 9 chord. So you'd be looking at James Brown, we finish the song, and he might do that head thing. It'd be, and he would 
drop where he wanted the beat to be to drop that new thing. We hold that stuff out. Who knows how long? Sometimes he would point to the side, and we, that meant four chords going up, nine chords. That would be one of our little added things that he could add to the end of that. And then he goes like that. We go one, two, three, four. And then another one he would add, he would say five. This was the five riff. This would be. I don't know how that was a five riff, but it was like triplets kind of a thing. And it would be in B flat minor pentatonic. So it starts on the B flat. One, two, three, one, two, three. Once again, we got. That was one of James Brown's cool riffs in the show that was called the five riff. So he had the one that went to the side, which four chords going up. And they had the five riff. And a lot of times that one would be in good foot. We go right back to good foot. So get on the good foot has this D minor chord top. So that's 10, 10, and 10 on the bottom three strings. So if you count those, it's like one E, one E, and a two E, and a. So it's like the one E of the one and the and a of the two. Because if you think about right where those last two end, the next beat would hit. Boom. Boom. So those are the last two sixteenth notes of that second beat. So one E, and a. One E, and a. Boom. So if you get on the good foot, I would play that a whole lot. Now Keith's part was, and that's the G string, two, four, and five. And then there would be a riff, there'd be like a bass riff, sometimes the guitars could play with it too, but it'd be like a chromatic thing from this D. Five, four, three, two, one, oh. Five, four, three, two, one, oh. And then go down a string. And then it would be like a D raise nine chord. One of the guitars would hit that note. So it'd kind of be like, I think I, I would probably hit that chord and Keith would hit those other notes. Like. And then it had a little riff. That's D uh, seven nine to the D raise nine there. So and then eventually back these riffs. And I toyed with just playing those chords and not doing anything else. But Spike, our percussionist, told me, put those chicks in there, man. He's like, it gives a lot more life to it. So I ended up being like a... Instead of just... So I agreed with him and it added a lot of life to it when you did it like that. So once again, these lower riffs. So let's kind of get on the good foot, quick version. Here's another one, how about please, please? This one has the same G9 chord. 
but it's gonna go to the C13 chord. So this is eight, and then mute the A string, and then eight, nine, and 10. That gives you like a C7, but with a 13 in it, so. G to C, and then G to D, 10th fret. And the G to E minor seven, A minor seven, to D seven nine. And then chromatic to the raise nine. So G, G nine, C13. G9, D13, G to C, and then G to E minor 7, A minor 7, D7. That's usually when he would start saying he was going to go into Sex Machine right about then. Okay, so that was a bit of Papa Don't Take No Mess, a head riff, and Get On The Good Foot. Now let's talk about one other little segue thing he did. This was Mother Popcorn. When he would say popcorn on stage, he would say popcorn, bam, he'd give you a downbeat. What I had to do, my job on that one was... So that's like the D7. It's like the top of the D7. And it would just slide up and back from fives to sevens. So you got that, that one finger gets real strong at being able to move around. And I'm muting those other ones. Even though I've got that shape going on, I'm not playing those strings. I'm like muting those strings by just touching them and not making notes out of them, you know. Inevitably. And what's the four one, the one that goes to the side? And what's the five one? So those were some of the really fun tricks that he would throw in the middle of a show. You never knew when they were coming, and it made things stay very spontaneous and exciting. So props to James Brown for all those cool tricks he had in his show. Oh, there's two things that I've... There's one thing I forgot to do in Doing It to Death in the other lesson. And that's where we had the extra chord, so it was like. And then my G, the C13. So one of my subscribers asked me, what are those riffs that you guys did? And one, one of them was Keith's riff, and one of them was my riff. So when we went... Um, So Keith had a riff that was like. So that's kind of like a minor pentatonic for the F. Or like. Something like that, so. And then we went to the. When we did that G to C thing, I went. So I kind of played off that F major, kind of a little BB King kind of trick there. F major pentatonic for that. Um, but see, it's using that G note a lot. So it's like that G chord kind of matches. Even though I'm playing an F major pentatonic, I'm using that G a lot within my phrasing. And then I go back to the F, so we have the... Okay, so sorry I left that out of the last one. There's, there goes that from my homeboy who was asking about that. Appreciate you. All right, let's look at another one. Let's, um... Oh, the Make It Funky was another one. So we went through that, but I didn't really talk about the bridge of that one. So it'd be like... That's another one of those sliding all three of those notes down here. So it's really just going to the four chord, going to the G7-9. But it had some cool little slides. Right now, 
right now, right now, right now. And in the live show, we did this little, um, like, Dizzy Gillespie little salt peanuts, salt peanuts. So that was another little fancy thing that was in the show. That's just the D in its octave. Salt peanuts, salt peanuts. And then we back into the riff. So here's the bridge. Now we hit that D again. Make it funky. So that was a little bit more. And that was a couple of things I kind of forgot to add into the last one. So let's look at another one. Let's look at um, Jam. Jam is a fun one. It's like in a G minor pentatonic. Okay, so we got the G. But um, bum B flat here. C. and then a D raised nine chord. And then you got the soul riff. So the first thing I'm doing is these second and third strings hammer into the four just on the G string. So it's like three and three hammer into this fourth fret of the G string. And then I got the F to G there on the D string. So, so that's three, four, five, three, three, five. And then you got you can hit all three of those fives. You could just hit the, the two that are on the same strings. Is that when you're doing? It sounds a little more Stevie Ray Vaughan if you hit them all though. Here's a little trivia for you. What James Brown song did Stevie Ray Vaughan play some lead guitar on? Let me know. Okay, so that's how the big payback gets going. You see there's two different kind of ways of doing it, doing it with a wah or doing it without. Um, so what I did there with the bass thing, that's kind of the bass line, kind of eight on the D string, eight on the A string to the six on the D string. And then this is the two bottom strings, the sixth fret, so you could kind of slide into it and do it more choppy if you're not doing the wah. But if you're doing the wah while you're like, That kind of thing. So once again with the wah, when you're trying to go wow, 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 when you're trying to get the more trebly sound, that's when you shoot it towards the ground and you kind of pull it away to create an effect of moving, shifting kind of sounds, right? So let's look at the next part of payback. That's going to be. So that's six on the G string and eight on the B string. So it's one of those things you just have that steady thing going. It's just some of them are hits and some of them are mutes. See, I got these other fingers muting those other strings so I can chop them all and only hit the two that I really want. Now there's a wah-wah part that goes with that. It's kind of like this, like. 
So this is your B flat octave in the lower B flat. Six 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 hammer to the eight back to the low root. Now this is that when you're taking a pentatonic and sliding it up in that new position, that little blues lick. So it kind of goes from that ten and nine to those sixes to the eight. There was a little thing where Keith would do a F raise nine on that one. On the first set of hits, let me be back. Then some later hits, you'd be like, hit me, and be like. So that's like eight six, eight eight, and then back to the riff. Also, at the beginning of the song, when you got all that stuff, there is a little bit right before it gets to that main riff where we went B flat. We did B flat uh, minor seven, D flat, E flat major chords. So it'd be, and then the main riff would start. So you could put those together and be like this. So I'll get a little loop going where we can hear both of those things together. Well, hope you all enjoyed that. That was the next James Brown long lesson with lots of songs in it. There's going to be more coming up. It was a great time playing with him. I did about eight years. I did about six and a half years in his band and a year and a half in his opening band. Got to play all kind of fancy great shows and play with some great musicians and had a great time. So once again, love and respect. Rest in peace, Mr. James Brown. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks a lot.